Bodyguard Munishwara Temple is one of those wonders of this city, so to speak. But why in this particular place he is called Bodyguard Munishwara is very fascinating. Bodyguard Munishwara Temple is a very fascinating shrine because it begins in colonial times and finally it evolved and changed character and became very popular in the present times. So it's one of those wonders of this city, so to speak. Today, people go there, they take their vehicles, new vehicles, they go there, they pray to bodyguard Muniswarar because they believe that Muniswarar is so named there because he protects their body. The body of the vehicle and the body of all the people who are inside the vehicle. So they go there, they give their keys, then a puja is performed, then the prasadam is brought out, then lime is placed around the vehicle and then the driver drives away very confident that he is taken he or she is taken care of for the rest of their lives so, in the Madriana Vishangal, and then Narako. And then a Pudusa Mandi at Tama, the Kandri Shilam Pogo, and the accident of Haman, and Rodeo Vira Padagathi, Kondu and the Vita Sacra and the Shakti or Kita Irkar the Nala, Naria Mandi and Lamandi on the Puja Puduana. Car, Pudu Karanalo, Bike Wangalo, Pulla Inga on the Pujipodo, Midas Pongal Stupo, would pair him for the Petty Bonala, Alati and Alaka together, Mida on the Pudo. The English Pongal was saved, Adder Panga, Adder the Gaud Panga, Koi Gudbanga, then let them be written as very brilliant in the Malaripa Pongo Bodhisattva. You will find Munishwara temples all around. Uh, Chennai all around Tamil Nadu. In fact, Muniswarar is a guardian deity, so to speak. But why in this particular place he is called bodyguard Muniswarar is very fascinating because it has to do with the East India Company. By 1799, early 1800, the British had become very secure over here. There was no threat of invasion and all that. The governor at that time was Edward, the son of Robert Clive. He was the second Lord Clive. He decided that he would convert that garden bungalow into a massive mansion suitable as a residence for the governor. So that was converted into what was called government house. And by the side of it came up what was called the banqueting hall, which today we recognize as Rajaji Hall. So from 1802 onwards, it became the practice for the governors to live in Mount Road in government house and they would go every day to Fort St. George for their work. This is how it went on. The governor required a bodyguard because he needed people to protect him. Whenever he went out on a horse carriage, they would form two columns and they would go on horses. Then they would be standing guard outside the gate of government house and all that. So the government, the governor's bodyguard was housed on what was called the island. Even today you have the island grounds. And in the island, there was what was called the bodyguard lines. And every day the bodyguard would come from there and then take up duty in front of government house and then at the end of the day they would go back to bodyguard lines. Many of them were Muslims. So a governor's bodyguard mosque was built which still stands on the island behind what used to be the bodyguard lines. Then my guess is this Muniswara temple must have been a small wayside shrine that existed by the side of bodyguard lines where the governor's bodyguard was living and therefore it came to be known as bodyguard Munishwara temple. I The name I think like you have visa engineer, there is a chartered accountant Pulayar like this so this also is one of those varieties where you now have a bodyguard 